Antigua for the first time. It's the 10th anniversary edition. We've got the largest fleet so far. We're expecting 87 boats on the start line. Oh, it's a fantastic race. You know, it's, it's actually in the bigger boats, it's a sprint. It's, you're always in transition. Great breeze, beautiful islands, and you get to come to Antigua. You know, everyone has a chance and we're all racing against each other and it's, I think the IRC rule has really done a great job. It's very good for me to, to come here uh, before the road drum and uh, I look the condition and uh, I prepare the road drum. <laughs> we love the wind, we love the sea, the boat is made for it and uh, I think that is an advantage. What is going to be the challenge for the teams, there is an upper level trough that uh, provides unstable air and that is going to be uh, the driving mechanism for schools. The start of these races is always a very interesting, exciting, nervous, really tense time. It will be tricky when you go around uh, St. Kitts, Navies, obviously Guadeloupe. There is many local effects from the islands themselves. I think our biggest competition this year will come from some of the foil-assisted boats, the most obvious one being Rambler. And then we have tried to compensate for the lack of stability or beam against Rambler and the other boats by working on this uh, DSS foil. Uh, CQS is more the narrow hull. Upwind, for sure, they may be uh, faster or more performing. I still think Rambler will be extremely hard to beat on, on this kind of a race because there's a lot of reaching in the 8200 degree wind angle with lots of breeze. During the three days, we're not going to be sleeping or anything. Everybody will be on board and we will be on each and every leg as fast as we can and I think the others are going to do the same. When a puff comes for a class 40, it goes even higher out of the water and it goes even faster. It's uh, a speed race. Strong winds will favor the, the bigger boats. Records are going to be beaten for sure. We'll be pu pushing hard. be fun to uh, break a record. We've got a pretty diverse fleet. We've got pros on... Uh, Obviously the big boats, we've got professionals on some of the 50-foot boats this year. Um, we've got quite a Corinthian fleet as well. It's a big challenge there. They'll all be looking forward to the race, but they'll also be just thinking about what their tactics are on the line, how they get off the line. started on a, on a positive note when we caught Rambler on our way to Barbuda. So I think clearly we, in these winds, we were we were significantly faster on a reach. This boat gets us, but because this race had three tight reaches, because the wind was far enough north, that, that all of a sudden we started to realize this is possible. Uh, from Tentamera down to Guadeloupe was at night. And um, very fast, very intense, very wet. I was trying to shield myself from the spray every possible way because it was coming from everywhere and I just couldn't see anymore and in the end I was just shutting my eyes for as long as I could and just, just trying to focus enough on the instruments just to go, yeah, yeah it's about right. Uh, I think on the whole uh, the conditions were just perfect for Paris. And you might say, why did we beat the records? Now, I think it might come down to evolution and design. We took a ton and a half of displacement out of the boat, so it's lighter and livelier, and it, it just gets going. It gets up and goes very quickly. Everybody notices that when you drive the boat, that if it sort of falls out of the groove, you just turn it down and away it goes. You always just wait for that, that sudden bang. 
signals trouble because we've all had those bangs and they can be of greater and lesser severity. So you worry about that. This time we did not leave much on the track. We came around the, the eastern side of, of the island with uh, Proteus right next to us the whole time and uh, knew that if we couldn't beat them on the reaches that we were going to have trouble with them on the whole course. We get on the reach, we had to put up everything that we knew was the right sail, the water in, the trim tab on, and go as hard as we could. The two runs uh, from the Barbuda mark were our, our, our two big moments. And on the backside of all the islands leading up to, to go around uh, St. Barts and St. Martin, uh, we had the fro on doing 30 knots on that, and that was when we really left Proteus behind. I think we've kind of found some places to push and found some spots to kind of ease off again, and luckily we brought some uh, heavy-duty offshore uh, artillery. It, uh, it's a bit scary going, uh, you know, a 90-degree true wind angle for eight hours in the dark, but uh, I guess you have a little bit more of an appetite for it after a little while. Surf down a wave as the jib was half up and it uh, got caught in the, the water, ripped, ripped the foil half off. The two bowmen got swept all the way back to the shroud and almost went over. From that point onwards, we only had one jib. You know, we had the uh, heavy weather jib and we put some soft tanks on and uh, you know, we were pretty confident it would hold and uh, thankfully it did. It's a war of attrition, you know, you saw a lot of good boats drop out of this race with a lot of good sailors and it's always disappointing when that happens. So to be able to persevere and, uh, you know, notch a good result is certainly a small win. The condition was not easy, but we have some some nice uh, fast switching in, in rough sea and was really stressing but fun. So the worst thing is we break our uh, solent. That's it. But the boat is still uh, still there and on the on the ro uh, on the right side. <laughs> That's it. I think it went really well. I think the boat uh, does light up and it really lights up with a bit of, of a reaching sail. It's a, it's a tough boat to race hard and, uh, and that was a tough race. The problem is electronics and seawater don't go that well together and that's my job really on board and trying to sort things out and uh, it's a struggle. And on one occasion we uh, had complete shutdown, or no, on one occasion maybe uh, maybe I reset my computer 80 times, maybe I reset my wireless system 35 times, I don't know. But uh, it's, a, it's a battle. Good drivers, so in fact it was fast all the time. I was uh, far away to believe that we were we were having the we were having a record record uh, because I don't know the other races. Uh, so this was uh, another additional satisfaction at the end. It's uh, definitely one of the toughest races we've done on the boat. Um, you know, it's proper op open ocean. There's no protection. And uh, to have the curveballs thrown in, like massive holes under Guadeloupe and rounding, you know, even places like um, St. Bart's, it was just proper lumpy there with the reverberating sea. So, yeah, no, it was interesting. It was good. Man down, fell on the helm last night. It was mental, 40 knots. Got thrown right across the boat. Been on the phone to the medic. They say he's going to live, but probably should go in, and so yes, we are retiring. Within a few hours of the race, the electronics all went down, so we were basically sailing blind. Had a bit of a frank discussion about it. You know, we're about to launch into a big, big air upwind beat, and with no electronics, um, you know, the biggest concern was safety. If we were to have a situation like an MOB or something like that, we'd have no way of knowing where we were or getting back to a person. Pretty disappointing, but uh, hopefully we'll be back. Did a jibe set on the bar view mark and the wind slowly started to build. Call for a takedown. Dug the nose and at the same moment a 35 knot squall came through in a slightly different, it just knocked us flat. It, we needed to just pack it in and bring her home. She was not in a good state. Uh, we, well, we didn't make it all that far. Uh, about uh, just after the Bermuda mark, so about 60 or 70 miles in. And I think jumping off a wave, we came down a little bit sideways, and the force was enough to snap the canner. Usually the boat's bulletproof. I mean, we came through, I think, out of 105 starters in the middle sea race. We were one of only 35 finishers. It was really, really fun um, to do, and you know, learned a lot very quickly. In the flatter stuff, other guys starting getting on the helm, try and get into some protection. We're just trying to find flat seas and stay away from scrolls. That was basically our mo and we then lost our wind input. It wouldn't be prudent and it would be unseemly to try and continue in the dark in those conditions 
on you know on a four lane boat like this where you're basically trying to sail blindfolded um, I had a really annoying noise on my computer I didn't know what it was and it was a, an alarm I've not heard before on our screen I could see there was a handful or more of the AIS men overboard so then that's when we started to hear radio chatter of something up you know something happening up forward and ultimately we discovered that Fujin had gone over ripping along it was very windy and as we were going around west side of yep. Seba the, the wind we got into the lee we still had a our stay cell up and reef main and we kind of coasted through that we started getting big lifting puffs over 30 knots and one of them just caught us off guard we didn't react quickly enough and the boat went mm -hmm. over two, three seconds, we were up, and it was clear we'd, we'd gone over, and it's paused momentarily, the shroud broke, and we turtled, and at that point, I thought, oh, this is gonna hurt when I hit, but almost immediately, trash on top of me. And in the end, I eventually ended up working as a relay station with the French Coast Guard for about 45 minutes. Racing full on and search and rescue full on is exactly the same game, really. But there were some catabatic puffs coming down. And we got hit by two, you know, one must have been like you know, maybe 40 knot, but I suspect that may have been what happened to Fugit. If my sandwich gets wet, I'm gonna cry. Oh, it's so damn there, John. It's so, so sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> We got five miles to go and T was in front of us. The finish line is to our right. We'll be done in an hour. It's a, it's a tough boat to race hard and uh, and that was a tough race. Uh, do your homework. It's a fantastic race but you've got to come prepared. And so it's a combination of the great wind, great scenery. It's a, it's a wonderful course. You say Caribbean 600, it's like Hobart or Bermuda. Not You know, it's a new race but it'll be around for a long time.